Hi, we're back at the Psalms. We're going to be in Psalm 56, and thank you for your patience. I've had family in for the last week, and it's been hard to find some time to get away. Uh, but uh, anyway, we will be in Isaiah, um, excuse me, Psalm 56. And another, another Psalm where we see Christ in the middle of his thoughts, in the middle of his fears and struggles as his enemies were surrounding him and plaguing him and bringing distress upon his mind. Be gracious to me, O God, for man has trampled upon me. Fighting all day long, he oppresses me. My foes have trampled upon me all day long, for they are many who fight proudly against me. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God I have put my trust, I shall not be afraid. What can mere man do to me? Now we, have, of course, quote this um, in relation to ourself. And it is, it is right, it is good to quote this in relation to ourselves. We know that man can do nothing to us. Uh, who shall lay a charge against God's elect? Um, when we speak of these passages, oftentimes we have a tendency to look at them from a carnal perspective as opposed to the perspective of which Christ speaks, which is an eternal perspective concerning our relationship to God. Humanity can do nothing to us. The attacks, words, biting, and devouring words of the self-righteous can do nothing. They can do nothing to Christ. They did nothing. They could do nothing to him, and they can do nothing to us as we are protected by the righteousness of Christ. So we can, with full assurance, echo these words. And uh, if there's anything I could say about the application to us today, it is whatever we see of Christ's thoughts, we can echo those thoughts as we go through our lives, surrounded by those who hate grace, those who hate uh, the salvation that Christ gives us by his grace. So in God I put my trust, I shall not be afraid. This is first Christ going before us. What can mere man do to me? All day long they distort my words. All their thoughts against me are evil. Now, lest we forget that we were in the same place before he turned our hearts, uh, we need to be reminded of what we have been brought out of uh, and that we are now in a position of victory. We are in a position of ruling and reigning, that we have dominion. How? By carnal weapons of warfare? No, but by uh, pruning hooks and plowshares. As the Word of God teaches us, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and beat their spears into pruning hooks. That is, we have the fruitful tools of the gospel. They attack, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited to take my life. So again, this is the lurking of those who walk about like roaring lions. In the time of Christ, they tried to devour him, they tried to devour his people, and similarly, they do that today, and through the gospel, we cast them out. And that, that is, we cast out their accusations. They attack, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited to take my life because of wickedness cast them forth. In anger, put down the peoples, O God. And he does this through the power of the gospel. You have taken account of my wanderings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? And again, we, uh, we have turned this as a, uh, what is a secondary application into a primary application. But these are the tears of Christ. Uh, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So Christ, God numbered his tears and in turn, ours also have been numbered and they've been poured upon Christ so that we no longer are sorrowful. Our, our tears have been taken away. Now in a very secondary application, uh, we certainly we have tears. Uh, we have physical tears, but they, they must be separated from the world of spirituality, the world of uh, the eternal. And that is, there are no more tears. There is no more sorrow. Uh, the word of God says he has, he has borne our griefs. He's carried our sorrows. He took them. He took our sorrows of sin. Uh, he's removed them. 
uh, this transgressions as far as the east is from the west. We're cleansed. There's no more death. There's no more crying. In Christ, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Those things are always true in spite of how we may feel or perceive things. Uh, the truth of Christ uh, has dominion over our feelings. And we want those two to intersect. And at times in our life, many times they do intersect. Um, I just got a note from a guy today. Uh, he just said, you know, basically his life has been changed forever with the truths of the kingdom. And then his life has been changed. Doesn't mean that he's not going to experience some physical sorrows. But in terms of the, his understanding of the kingdom of God, it's rich. It's beautiful. It's thriving uh, there's living waters everywhere, fruitfulness. You have taken account of my wanderings, put my tears in your bottle, are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. And that is, when they bring charges against us, we cry unto the Lord. And the gospel, we, we respond with the gospel. Yes, I have fallen, but seven times the Lord lifts us up. How? by the gospel. It's completion. My enemies will turn back in the day when I call this. I know that God is for me. Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? This is a new covenant prophetic utterance referring to the messianic kingdom. In God, whose word I praise, and the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I've put my trust. I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? We need to say that all the time, every time, in every circumstance, especially as it pertains to our, our daily failures, our daily struggles. Uh, man can do nothing to us because we're protected by the righteousness of Christ. Your vows are binding upon me, O God. I will render thank offerings to you, for you have delivered my soul from death. Christ to God and us to Christ, to God through Christ. Indeed, my feet from stumbling. You have delivered my soul from death. You have delivered my feet from stumbling. Why? So that I may walk before God in the land of the living. So the whole, I'm sorry, in the light of the living. So the whole purpose for our deliverance is that we would walk before him in holiness all the days of our lives. Compare this passage with Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. And that was Psalm 56.